North won a state title in 92. After tonight, only one of these teams will be alive for 95. The latest Battle of Naperville is next. From Naperville, Sports Channel presents the Illinois High School Association football playoffs, a quarterfinal matchup between the Huskies of Naperville North and the homestanding Red Hawks of Naperville Central. Well, it is a night unfit for man or beast, yet we are playing football. Hello, everybody. I'm Mike Lederman. Welcome to Memorial Stadium here in Naperville, the home of the Central Red Hawks. With me, Jack McInerney, coach at Oak Park River Forest High School. Jack, a lot of people think this is the game of the year in the state of Illinois, and it's going to be played under some very trying conditions. Well, it really is a tremendous matchup, and the conditions are going to be very difficult for both teams. They both have outstanding skill players, but I think what's going to happen is it's going to come down who's the better mutters. <laughs> That's for sure. Naperville Central undefeated. Naperville North second in the state last year. The only defeat this year so far has been to Naperville Central. How are they going to make up a 33-point deficit in this postseason game? Well, interesting about that, that deficit was all in the first quarter. Lavery threw four touchdown passes in the first quarter. Since that happened, Naperville North has made two major changes. Number one, they haven't lost a ball game since. And the second one is they changed all three defensive backs from that ball game and they have three new starters ever since that ball game. Well, they've had a couple of constants. Certainly in the backfield, the quarterback's Scott Cavanaugh. He's six foot three, six foot four. He is a prospect. He really is. He is one of the most outstanding quarterbacks in the Chicago and in the state, for example. And we're, we're it's a great matchup tonight because with Lav Lavery, he's the same way. Two outstanding throwing quarterbacks with a lot of stats, but it's going to be a tough night to throw. And out of the backfield, Jeremy Walsh for Naperville North, not only their leading rusher, but the leading receiver for the Huskies. Well, you know, he's really a heck of a football player. He's, he catches a lot of passes coming out of the backfield, 41 of them this year, and he also rushes very well. But the other part of it is he's also their kicker. He's a real good football player. Well, if he could do anything else, maybe he could stop the rain. Short of that, Naperville Central is marching to its first 6A championship. Except every time they've met North in the postseason, North has won. Naperville Central this year, though, has got Tim Lavery, and he is the number one quarterback in the state. Well, he's the Chicago Sun-Times Player of the Year. The only difference between him and Kavanaugh is he's left-handed and will be wearing a red jersey tonight. Great stats, great quarterback. Well, he'll be wearing a red jersey at least to start. They'll probably all be brown by the middle of the first quarter. When Lavery isn't throwing, Jim Tumulty he is running, and boy, is he running nearly a 1,000 yards already. Special back. Last year as a junior, led the state in total offense. This year, he missed two ball games with a bad knee, but he's been outstanding all year for him. Has over 900 yards and 21 touchdowns. All right, we hope you're going to enjoy this one from the comfort of your living room or den. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a minute. Getting ready for the start of the quarterfinal matchup, Naperville North, Naperville Central. The rain not only hasn't let up, but the temperatures are falling. They're talking about snow coming in after midnight. But uh, right now, it is just puddles and puddles. As uh, you take a look at Naperville Central getting set to kick off. And they will be defending uh, the goal to our left. Just, the temperature's already dropped about 15 degrees to 40. The humidity, obviously, 100%. That northeast wind, we are facing east as you look, 17 miles an hour. That's Mark Pollock, number 49, getting set to kick it off for Central. Deep for Naperville North will be Ryan Kaiser, number 24, Justin McCarran's number 89. So we will go here at Jack, I guess. Uh, while the ball is dry, is the best time to strike. Well, the other part of it is field position right off the bat. If he slips, gets a bad kickoff, and they prevail against the field position. I hate to say this, but sometimes you just have to let a ball be very early on. The kick is high, the kick is deep, and the kick will be into the end zone for a touchback. So, Naperville. North, the Huskies will be in there visiting white jerseys with the blue and orange numerals and trim, and oh boy, you can see the, the rain is playing havoc with the cameras. Scott Cavanaugh, the quarterback, a six foot four senior. Pastor Rogers, Jeremy Walsh, Tom Jurjevic, as they come out in their double wing set. 
That is Djurjevic in motion. Right to throw is Kavanaugh, and he completes it to Walsh. And Walsh gets good yardage, first down yardage. And he is brought down by Josh Hawkins, number 44, and right away they're throwing while they can. That was the counter. You can see Jeremy Walsh right there coming across, back across the green. They show flow one way, but the linebacker's moving. And it's one of those, I dare you, or I'll show you that I can throw the ball in these kind of conditions. Credit Jim Hollick, the cornerback on the tackle. It's a first down. Gate of 19. There is Walsh, number 23. Again, you'll nearly always see that double wing formation. And this time it goes to the up man, and that is Astor Rogers. And Rogers, the senior, he is brought down by Jeff Buckley, the linebacker, a senior, 190 pounds. They are uh, the offensive uh, skill players, if you will. Kavanaugh Djurjevic, the only two-way player in this game. Walsh, Astor Rogers, Mike Rank, the tight end. Justin McCarron's a junior. He is one of the wide receivers. Schupnagel, Wanick at 275, the biggest guy there. Duncan Galloy and Peterson, that's the line. Second down after the gain of three. Again, the motion. And the pitch. It's Walsh, and Walsh gets about a yard short of the first down. Knocked out of bounds. Third and one. Looked like by uh, the outside linebacker, Brad Grolke. Well, Naperville is moving the ball here, and as we, as we mentioned early on, Mike, this first drive, oftentimes a game like this can be the big drive before the field gets in such a that you can't do it. Third down from the 48. Djurjevic goes in motion. And right, again, Aston Rogers as the whole center of that central line comes in and the fans on the near side, the hometown fans think that uh, Rogers was stopped. We'll see right there. There is Aster Rogers. And we're going to get a measurement right here. Rogers, five foot nine, 180 pounds senior, 600 yard rusher, averages better than six yards a carry. Did he get the one he needed right there? 1028 to go here in the first quarter. That was a big stop right there early on because they were moving the ball quite nicely and developing some confidence, but that was a good stop. Mike Svela, the nose guard, leading the charge right up the middle. And let's take a look at the measurement. And they will be about a football length short. All right, coach, what do you do here? Oh, mercy. There's Larry right now, and hes uh, they're going to go for it. At midfield, fourth and one. You put so much pressure on the special teams in a situation like this. Now you got to keep in mind they have been moving the ball ex extremely well right now, so he's figured he could get a yard the way they've been running the ball. Last week against Downers Grove South, a fourth and one from the one for Downers Grove South, and Central stopped them, and that turned the game around. Key person right here, Mike is the center, number 66, Nate Duncombe. He'll be a key player all night. We'll see if they try to draw the encroachment call against the defense. Djurjevic again, the motion man. And the fake and the pass up is complete. Look out, Jeremy lost the look in pass, and boy, does he make yardage. What a call. Jason, uh, Josh Hawkins coming up to stop along with Grolke, but what a call with the wet ball. Well, what they're looking for, obviously, the linebackers, everybody was coming. A safe pass because it's just a four-yard dump pass to Jeremy Walsh, who was their all-purpose running back. Great call by Larry McEwen, but they're always great when the kids execute them. Fourth and one turns into a 20-yard gain. The ball on the 31-yard line of Naperville Central. Walsh with the pitch. And Jeremy Walsh beside behind the left side of the line. Tackled by Cleary and O'Shea. Gets a couple of yards. Jim Cleary and Rocky O'Shea. The two safeties come up to combine after the six-yard gain. Second and four. The ball just outside the 25-yard line. What a great name for a football player, Rocky O'Shea. And there's the defensive line, Grolke, Spiker, Svale of the Noseman, Smentek, Hawkins, Paleo, Pollock, Cleary, O'Shea, and D.J. Johnson, the sophomore, the only sophomore in the lineup. 
This is Rodgers. Rodgers breaking a couple of tackles, and he gets close to first down yardage. Again, Rocky O'Shea coming up from the secondary spot to make the stop. A strong run by Astor Rodgers. Well, it was interesting that they modified their offense on that particular play, a slight adjustment. The uh, fullback, that's a counter trap with the guard kicking out and the tackle lead, and a nice job by... Uh, by Aster Rogers, he hasn't carried the ball a lot this year. He's only carried it 95 times, but uh, he did a nice job on that play. Down to the 21-yard line, clock at 8.55 and counting. Opening drive here, scoreless in the rain, muck, and mire in Naperville. Now the inside handoff. And this is Walsh, and Walsh gets very little. Well, we had talked, Mike, earlier before the kickoff, you and I, about uh, how well Naperville Central has done all year. They're 11-0, but in the last few ball games, their defense has been somewhat suspect. Now, it's tough to say that about a team that's 11-0, but they had a real tough ball game against Downers Grove South. Downers Grove South is a heck of a football program. But they uh, they moved the ball extremely well, and then the defense helped them out in the fourth quarter. Maybe a half yard gain. Kavanaugh and Kavanaugh couldn't find the receiver, and he gained a gain of four, about five yards. For he, for he's brought down by Mike Spaler, the linebacker. So you get somebody like Kavanaugh out there running. He has a bootleg pass out in the corner. You got to remember, him. he's 6'4", 190 pounds, and uh, so he can cover a lot of ground out there. North using the clock, and here a key third down play. Receiver split right and left. Slot man is Jurjevic, and Jurjevic is stopped this time. And they will have a healthy fourth and five with Naperville North to try to keep this drive going. So from a coaching standpoint, Mike, usually in games like this, as you go along, you want to stay out of the middle of the field because the middle between the two hash marks is what gets chewed up early. And oftentimes better off running outside the hash mark between the sidelines and the hash mark where the traction is a lot better. No thought of a field goal here. Mike Rink, the tight end, splits left. Fourth down and three. Kavanaugh. Almost intercepted by Hollick. But the ball goes over on downs. A big play as uh, Jimmy Cleary was there as well. So Naperville Central stops the drive and will take over. Well, he had him open right at the top of your screen. He had him open right there, getting by the bump and run. He's open, but he... Had a tough time delivering the ball under these conditions. Hung it up a little bit, the safety comes over. But he was open initially. So after an extended drive by Naperville North, Central will take over. First time it will touch the ball with Tim Lavery under center. Corey Stevens, Jim Tumulty, the backs. Tumulty, the man to watch. He's the setback number four. Takes the first handoff, and the ball is loose. Wow. And North says they have it. Jim Tumulty on his first carry coughs it up. And it looked like Doug Groover, number 63, got in there to recover it. And just like that, a big break. They're running a zone scheme here, Mike. And he's trying to cut back, and he just had his arm pulled away. And, of course, the ball's slippery, and it goes down on the ground. And the Huskies of Naperville North come up with a big recovery. Give the recovery to Mark Van Bershot. 6'3", 190-pound linebacker, a two-year starter. Made the big play right there, and Naperville North is back in business. Once again, this is Kavanaugh. Jurjevic. And he is going nowhere. Rocky O'Shea, along with Query, putting the kibosh on him for a loss back in the backfield. Well, again, running the option, the dive fake to the fullback, hoping to freeze the linebackers and maybe draw those outside linebackers down inside and try and pop the pitch man outside. But Naperville uh, Central is not 11-0 for nothing, Mike. They do a great job on defense on that play. Gain of five.
Second and goal on the five. Kavanaugh shoots it. Looking for McCarrens. Oh my Touchdown. God. Touchdown. Yeah, Justin McCarrens, a one-handed catch, and the junior gets the Kevin score. Pass. Justin McCarron, 6'1", 175 pound junior, his seventh touchdown and none bigger. What a catch, Jack. That was a great catch and it looked like interference early on. This is just tremendous concentration. Tremendous concentration. That's his 23rd catch of the year. Great job in a big ball game like that. What a great catch. Jimmy Hollick, the cornerback, didn't see anything coming but a one-handed catch. Incredible play by McCarron's. Well, they saw that early, Michael. We mentioned that before, that he wasn't able to get the ball in that seam. And there he got it, a little shorter situation. Got the ball up. Walsh for the extra point. And it goes wide of the right goal post. So, five minutes, 41 seconds to go. North takes advantage of the turnover. Misses the extra point, but comes up with a big touchdown right here. They'll come back up the field with the score. Naperville North, six. Naperville Central, nothing. With Larry McCowan, let me tell you something. McEwen's got some kids, and that was an outstanding catch, especially when you figure your hands are frozen, the ball is over the wrong shoulder. Next. Well, I guess that almost shows us what the, the evening is about so far, a catch like that, and there, and an early fumble, and the whole difference, but Scott, Scott Cavanaugh had to put the ball up there for him to make that catch, and it's something that the people in the press box saw because they came back and they played again. Well, well, Jeremy Walsh will now kick off, off for the Huskies for Naperville Mark North. Pollock and Jason Shear are deep for the Red Hawks. Number 49, Mark, Mark Pollock. Number two, Jason Shear. The deep men for Central. It was really a, a heck of a drive by North. And then they drive it all the way down there. And then they're having the top running back, one of the top running backs in the state, turned over in the first carry. Dribble taken by Pollock. And Pollock has some room. Mark Pollock comes up. Mark Pollock. And he gets it out in decent Returns field position. Yards. Close to the 30-yard line. Tackle so once again, Naperville Central is going to go to work down 6-0. The there you First see the offensive backfield and receivers. Lavery, Stevens, Tumulty, et cetera, et cetera. Cut, Klippowitz, Nolder, Scott Bacon, Troy Munson. Munson's been playing on a bad knee. But he is going tonight. First down from the 34. And they go to Tumulty, and Tumulty gets some decent yardage. Tumulty in a counter trap does a nice job of cutting back. We'll see how long he's able to do that. His strength is cut back. You see the guard and attacker pulling right there. He cuts back in behind him. Watch the cut right there. Will he be able to have that kind of footing in another quarter or so? We'll have to see. 4.54 to go, first quarter. Second down after the gain of six. Again, it's Tumulty, and Tumulty with a big hole over the right side. Gets it up close to midfield. Got a 15-yard gain brought down by Chapetta. Tony Again, Chapetta, the safety. Right here is his zone scheme up front by Naperville Central. I think Jim Tumulty's a little upset, and that's why he's doing such a great job on that first carry when he fumbled, and he's coming back with a vengeance right now. Ball just short of midfield. First down for the Red Hawks. And again, it's Tumulty this time on the left side, and again into the secondary. Chapetta coming up to make the stop again, along with Ryan Fee, the cornerback. And Jim Tumulty is getting rolling. There you see his numbers so far this season, better than a five-yard average per carry. Right here again, the zone scheme that allows him to do what he does best, which is cut back, read the seam, see where the flow is going, and be able to do that running. And he is uh, something special on dry turf. He looks awful good here as a mutter. Checking for the first down. You know, one other thing, Mike, is that there's kind of a mismatch up front. The offensive line for Naperville Central is pretty darn big. Yeah, that's close and to 230 a man, I believe. And, uh, and when you get in a matchup like this, 
you know, when you're trying to slug it out and you're looking going over 180 pounds to 175 pounds, which is a defensive lineman for Naperville North, it can make a big, big difference. You see, Central just did get the first down. They're alternating about a dozen footballs in there. Ted Van Dorn, the athletic director at Naperville Central's, reached deep into the football bag. So first and ten. Ball on the north 40. Central with its first sustained drive. Lavery to throw his first pass. Looking deep for Shearer. And overshoots him. Lavery's pass intended for Jason Shearer. Incomplete. Shearer. Ryan Fee defending. Defended by. Second and ten. The quarterback Ryan the Fee. 40 yard line. And she that has been the big combination. It really has. Shearer the, is the go to guy, Mike. You take a look at the defense. McCoy Groover, McShay Williams, Landgraf, Van Bershot, Jurjevic again. Uh, Two-way player and Kenny Marker, and in the secondary, Charles Chapetta and Ryan Fee. Those are the three new defensive backs we talked about in the open that were changed after the first regular season loss in that third ball game. Second and ten for Central, trailing six nothing. First reverse. quarter again, the double reverse to Shearer, and Shearer's got some room. Avoids one tackle and look at Josh Shearer go. One man to beat and taken down. Finally, it looked like by Chapetta. Jason Shear, the ball Double carrier, reverse going reverse. one way, and here comes Shear coming back around. Good blocking at the, at the point of attack up there. Shearer nice cutback the right here. He starts running That's downhill where all the drainage down. is, and there he goes into the slump. Well, Childs That's missed him. Fee more. made the touchdown it's saving it's tackle. The ball on the 16 yard line. Here is Tumulty, and Tumulty dragged down in the backfield nicely by McShay. Chris McShay, only 5'8", 175, made a big stop on Tumulty right there. Second and nine. Good defensive pursuit right here. You can see them reading. They know what Tumulty likes to do, and he is the main back. It's an easier key for Naperville North because he's the main go-to guy. They don't give the ball to the fullback that often, but usually when they do, something happens good. Second and ten. Ball's on the 16. Lavery. And Lavery with room. And Lavery down inside the five. Lavery gets first down yardage. Kenny Marker, the linebacker, missed him. Before he is brought down, Lavery almost looked like a quarterback draw, but he's looking for a receiver here and can't find one. Well, they, they flooded one side, and they were in man coverage, which cleared the field on that side. And Lavery, you know, is 190 pounds, six foot three. He's got a long reach there when he dives, and he rushed for 204 yards this year and two touchdowns. Tommy Jurjevic making the stop. A gain of eight. Makes After an eight-yard game, so we'll be uh, looking at about a third and two, maybe a third and one, call it a nine-yard game. Good look at Tim Lavery, what he's done on the ground this year, which is just kind of a an hors d'oeuvre compared to what he did as far as throwing the ball with uh, 117 completions and 192 attempts for 1,800 yards and 23 touchdowns. That was the main course. Was thrown. Lavery leads him out. Kevin Cade coming in last minute to flank left. Clock running with 2.50 to go. The rain is just pounding here. No back, so excuse me, there's there's Tim Tumulty. They're stretching him out. He's an audible. Oh. That did not get the playoff. So instead of third and one, we've got a third and six. Coach's nightmare. Yeah, absolutely, a coach's nightmare. Jumping offside in a situation like that. Instead of having third and one, we're looking at third and six. There's a shot of Joe Bungie. Joe Bungie, 10 years at the same location. Did a great job here at Naperville Central. Shearer comes in. Lavery's got Stevenson Tumulty. Here is Tumulty. And Tumulty 
Gets close to the first down yardage. Now, when you first see that play, you think because he's tossing the ball that they're trying to get outside. But in essence, they're trying to stretch the outside perimeter, and he's going to cut it back inside. You can see right there, the defenders of Naperville North are stretching, and he's coming back underneath against the green. Another measurement here, Mike. Looks to be about a yard short. Now it's less than that, so it's fourth and a football. The ball is just outside the five. Got a Larry McEwen right there. He's done quite a job in the state playoffs. He's done quite a job his entire career at Naperville North. Larry not only has the one championship, but he was runner-up last year to uh, Homewood Flossmoor. So, fourth and less than a yard. North digs in. Bungie has called the play. And if you're a betting man, there's the guy who's going to get the ball. But again, with a six foot four inch quarterback, they may just try to wedge him out too. Well, maybe go sent his line is a lot bigger. But it's Hamilton and he gets it. Nothing fancy. Chris McShay making the stop. You can see right here, they're just ramming it right up offside of tackle. Great job by the left tackle right there coming down. Gerald Gutt, 6'3", 240-pound senior. So a first and goal from the four. A minute 40 and counting here in the first quarter. Naperville North leading at 6 to nothing, but Central on the march. Again, it's Tumulty, and he's tripped up very, very nicely in there by Ryan Fee. No game. A game of two, second and goal from the two yard line. So far, both teams actually are doing what they have done in the regular season under normal conditions. Now, again, this will change, or could change, as we move along and the field gets uh, turns more into a quagmire, but right now they're running their base offenses. Oftentimes in situations like this, as the conditions worsen, teams go to their goal line offenses and try and run those up and down the field. Well, we're getting an official's timeout here with 56 seconds to go, and the clock will be running now. Ball outside the two, second and goal. Power I set, Mike. Stevens the up back and Tumulty and wedging him out and going out. Close to the goal line is Lavery. And it is a touchdown. Well, nothing fancy, just a quarterback sneak behind his big center, Jason Nolda, 6'2", 195 pounds. Watch the center of the guards. He gets out in that linebacker. Great job right there by Jason Nolda. Get out, he got outside on that, on that middle linebacker. The guards, Scott Bacon and Ben Colquitz drove the defenders back, and Tim Lavery snuck it in. Third touchdown of the season rushing for Tim Lavery. And Jeff McGronin boom. Trying to put them ahead. Get the fake. O'Shea doesn't get it. Rocky O'Shea brought down by Tory Landgraf. Big play. Is intercepted by Chris Williams. Naperville looked like they were waiting for that point. And the interceptor by Chris Williams is just right sitting on there. Central. Special teams are very, very difficult tonight to, to be able to work out, but this was a planned play right here. You can see the way the receivers are going out. Usually you yell a help call if it's a bad snap. Well, you know, you know O'Shea was down, I think, even before yes. he threw the ball, so. We've got 30 seconds to go. We are tied here at six. And uh, the rain already obscuring much of the numbers. The broadcast rights to today's game have been granted to Sports Channel by the Illinois High School Association, and he rebroadcast of this event without the written consent of the IHSA and Sports Channel, strictly prohibited. Pollock will kick off. Take the 
Kaiser and McCarrens again deep. Got a bit interesting big, course, uh, uh, for North, rather. Big uh, pile of balloons landing on the field there. I came over from the north side to bring it over to Central without the best reception. No, that was a weather balloon that came down yeah, out of the rain. I think so. Oh, the weather is something else. You can see what it's doing to the cameras as well as the field. Pollock's kick is shorter this time. And scooped up. Ooh, look out. Kaiser with a good running start. Held on to the ball. An excellent field position. For the Huskies, Teleti on that last drive, six carries, 76 yards so far, and the one fumble that led to the touchdown for more. Here is Kaiser. Nice bounce that came right up there to him. He was able, able him to pick it up and run it back to a nice field position for Chris Gallione. A nice stop on the special team. So, ball's on the 42-yard line. Excellent field position for the Huskies again. Ten seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Coming out of Georgievich. Or it should be Georgievich. Brought down by Michael Svela. As the first quarter comes to an end. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Naperville North 6, Naperville Central 6. We'll be back. This is a public service. But let me tell you, these people were here, some of them two and a half hours before game time. Second down, 12 to go for Naperville North on the 40. Teams are tied at six. Mike Lederman with Jack McInerney. There is Wayne Kendall, the referee, and we are ready to go for the start of the second quarter. Dave Turner, our Sports Channel crew in the truck. Walsh in motion. Again, this time, Kavanaugh the keeper and Scott Kavanaugh. It's short yardage, brought down by David Spiker. Again, Naperville North coming out, running the option. I am surprised that they've held on to the ball as well as they've had. We've had the one turnover from Tumulty, but these teams aren't two of the best in the state for nothing. Third and 11. Receivers left and right. Kavanaugh as a flag is thrown. He completes it. Over to McCarrens, who caught the touchdown pass, but we've got a penalty flag, and we'll check this out. A hold against the offense. So McCarrens, who caught the touchdown pass, makes another nice catch, but this one's coming back. Well, it happened real early. That could be one right there, but he's thrown it back backside away from that shot right there. You got to keep the hands within the framework. If they end up getting outside the shoulder, even if you're not realistically pulling on the cloth, if they get outside the shoulders, the then they're going to make that call. The Makes it third and 21. Well, instead of third and 11, we're going to have a third and 21, and we will see the arm of Scott, of Scott Cavanaugh here, no doubt. Well, we're glad we'll see a draw or a screen in a situation like this because Naperville Central is going to be playing off quite a bit. It's going to be interesting to see who, who has to punt first and how that works out. Both teams' punters are averaging about 35 yards, so McCarron's to the right. Kavanaugh looking his way. Kavanaugh lets it go, and it is intercepted. Jimmy Cleary with the interception. And a bad ball thrown by Kavanaugh. Cleary the only one near it. I think what happened there, Scott Kavanaugh, a little ill-advised as far as uh, making this throw. He gets some pressure from the backside. Now, I don't know peripherally if he can feel it, but this is not a real good throw, and you can see the receiver slipping here. It was intended for Jeremy Walsh. Buckler, the linebacker, put a lot of pressure on Kavanaugh, so now a turnover going Naperville Central's way, and here come the Red Hawks. Good field position. Lavery and the gift to Tumulty. And a big, big hole, Tumulty. Lopping in the slot. Jim Tumulty. Mark Vandershot brings him down. But not before uh, about a 12 yard gain. Now he must, I'd like to check those cleats. He must have webbed feet. I don't know how he's cutting like that because 
he is really doing an outstanding job. He is a cutback runner, and this this turf doesn't seem to bother him. Let's take a good look at those shoes. Look at them. Maybe maybe they aren't shoes. <laughs> you can see the buck. Well, it's a 10-yard gain, enough for a first down. To the 35-yard line of Naperville North. Well, Tumblety runs a lot stronger than his 185 pounds. He's only 5'10", but he's a tough, tough runner. On first down, Tumblety again. And this time, North strings the play out. And the right side of the line beats Tumblety, led by Torrey Vangraff, the linebacker. Now, this play is exactly the same as that toss, but they run it out there trying to stretch it out, hoping that the uh, defense will, will uh, come down inside and he can bounce it out, but they did a nice job. They've scouted them. They play each other all the time. They really know what each other's going to do. It's, it's who's going to be able to stop each other right now. Ten minutes exactly to go. Second quarter on a second and nine. Score tied at six. Lavery to throw. Looks over the middle and completes it. A short gainer over to Corey Stevens. You know, it's even more difficult under conditions like this, Mike, for a left-hander to be throwing the ball rolling to his right. Tells you what kind of an athlete he is. Corey Stevens uh, plays the up back in this offense. Again, a good release man there. <laughs> there he's got the Chia pad look. <laughs> Although Chapetta plays over on the other side. All right, he won't do that. Now, Corey Stevens has been a good receiver for Central. He has 17 catches this year. He's averaged nine, nine yards a catch. A gain of a couple brings up a third and six. Tumblety! Fighting for extra yardage will be short of that first down. Brought down by Chipetta. There's Jim Tumulty. You know, around, around the middle of the second quarter, those uniforms start to weigh about 20 pounds more with all that moisture in them. They sure do. Same with the football. Oh, man. Brings up a fourth and three. No question here. Central will go. There's a good close-up shot of Corey Stevens. Kevin Cade splits left. Tumulty, the deep back, Stevens, the fullback. It is Tumulty with first down and more. Jim Tumulty blasting into the secondary. Ryan Fee finally makes the stop, and what a powerful run, along with Tony Chapetta for Tumulty. Look at him. Oh, my. This is just a real good job here running the inside zone scheme, but you can see right there, Naperville Central is manhandling that front four of of Naperville North, and really it's just they're overpowering them because they're so much bigger, but a nice job of running by Tumblety. Big Jerry Cut, 6'3 and 240. Down to the 15-yard line. Tumblety again, and this time going nowhere. Good defensive effort over there. See right here, he wants, he's looking to cut back, but you can see right there, they're all playing static football. They're waiting to see where he wants to cut. Nice job defense. And that is Brian Hahn, an oft-injured linebacker. He's come on about the healthiest he's been in his high school career, the junior, and he made the big stop there. Everybody wants to play in this big game. They'll be talking about this at the White Hen 20 years ago. Yeah. Second and ten, Lavery. Looking side arms it down in the corner. It is complete. Flag. Flag is down. It looked like Corey Stevens makes the catch. But we have to check out the penalty right there. And there's the flag. It may have been a hit after the play. Well, pass interference. Rich Childs was a defender there. Now this is set up off of the off of the run to Tumulty. They get him out there. You see Charles must have got him early. Right there. He must have gotten him early. Either way, it's a big play for Central. You can see the fake right there. A little sidearm action there. And the ball's deflected. 
I don't know if they saw that part of it. Now you know it's just tough to see period. It looked like a completion but it was deflected and then so the penalty will be accepted. At the seven yard line. That takes the ball to the seven yard line first and goal. Hey, we got it. Lavery sends the man in motion. Tumblety standing up. Jim Tumblety. Seven yard touchdown. 20 into the year. Running over the left side of that offensive line of Naperville Central. Kind of a physical mismatch. But just pounding him off the ball. Nice block right there by Corey Stevens, but a good job by Tumulty finding that seam and breaking it into the end zone. High stepping it in. 7.28 to go. Going for two. And now the, uh, the two -point conversion. try for the two-point conversion. And again, it is so sloppy for a kicker in this footing. Double T. He's got it. So, 14 to 6, the score is Naperville Central. Takes the lead. 7.28 to go first half. The whole team's ahead. Trailing 6 0. Central has put two touchdowns and a two point conversion on the board to lead it 14 to 6. Our next IHSA event on Sports Channel, the 1995 Girls Class A and AA State Volleyball Championship, coming your way Sunday night at 7 o'clock. Mark Pollock. Right now, we have got Mark Pollock. Ping the ball up again. 45 yard drive following the interception. 342 on the clock. Tumulty with the touchdown. His 20th rushing of the year. A kick to Kaiser and McCarrens. And it's taken by one of the up men for Naperville North. Out to good field position across the 35 yard line. Well, in rematches, Jack, as you can see, uh, hasn't been a lot of suspense. And there, there's been some outstanding teams that uh, have had to play each other twice this year. That's I quite a statistic. As we told you earlier, they, Naperville Central has never beaten Naperville North in the postseason in three tries. So here now, North trailing for the first time. Kavanaugh can run. And Kavanaugh brought down by O'Shea as well as Grokey. Good coverage in the secondary, and Kavanaugh had no place to go, but he was able to make some yardage on it. You can see right here he's dropping back. Good coverage, which you cannot see on that particular shot, but the Naperville Central defenders did a real nice job there enforcing the scramble. Brought the ball to the 45-yard line, gain of six, second and four. Clock at 6.25 in the first half. The give is to Walsh. We think second man through. They want those linebackers that come in on that fullback, and they give it to Walsh coming through Nick on the second. Paleo. Nick Paleo, the linebacker, making the stop for Central. Jeremy Walsh, you can see, is uh, wearing a different color from the one he started with. Got an official timeout right here. You, you know, you talk about the rematches, Jack. You go back to 1987 when North beat Central in the playoffs. Go over to 92, North beat Central again, goes on to win the 6A. Last year, Central's supposed to be the team. North beats them a third time and then finishes second in the playoffs. You think Central's got an incentive? Well, I imagine they do. But one of the other things is that both of these teams play in the tough DuPage Valley, and I mean week after week, they're playing playoff teams. The competition out here is absolutely incredible. Well, North went up to Lake Forest and had an easy time over there. You're not talking about the Bears. <laughs> now these are probably these are this is a state championship game right here. Both of these teams are of that quality. Well, that was the feeling, and Taylor Bell expressed this. We'll be talking to Taylor, of course, the fine, longtime prep guy of the Sun Times. This is the game of the year. Could very well be. 
Kavanaugh on the bootleg. Gets it out and again, broken up this time by the defense. Rocky O'Shea and Cleary have uh, played very, very well. Jay Johnson, the sophomore, coming in. Nice job here. This is a bootleg. He's going out, scrambling out here. Gets his shoulders turned. And he does a nice job right there of delivering the ball. Just a little behind him. Intended for Mike Rank, the tight end. And under these circumstances, I guess we need to say a little here, a little there, makes a big difference. You always have this discussion, who benefits on a sloppy field, the offense or the defense. I don't think anybody benefits tonight. Second and ten. And a quick hitter going over the middle and getting through Aster Rogers. Rogers taken down by Grunke. But a good effort by Rogers, right behind the center of the line, big Nate Duncan. You can see a good job there getting out of that linebacker. What they do because of their play selection, they get those linebackers starting to shuffle back on pass or trying to get outside the tackles to help out in the perimeter play, and then they ram that pullback up inside. It has been raining, as you know, if you're in the Chicago area all day. It has been pouring here. We expect snow a bit later. Temperature is dropping now into the 30s. And these, these kids are just playing their hearts out. Reverse. They reverse it. They give it to McCown. He's got room. And Justin McCown gets a block. Beats Grunke going down the sidelines into central territory. DJ Johnson knocking him out. Justin McCown has done it all. One-handed catch for a touchdown. And that big gainer on the reverse down to the 25-yard line. Well, you know, you get the flow going in one direction, but it's so darn hard to put the brakes on here. Nobody, you know, nobody has on the uh, the winter tires today, so they have trouble changing directions on this stuff. Johnson and Cleary knocking him out of bounds. After a 28-yard gain, so first and 10 from the 25-yard line, and North is in business. Walsh in motion, and again, they give it to Rogers, and Rogers stopped at the line, but he breaks a no-gainer into about a six-yard gain of Paleo. Part of the gang uh, tackling him, along with uh, Smentek. Uh, you can see right there, they're trying to run that trap, and uh, Dave Specker, 5'11", 205-pound senior, been in on 35 tackles this year. Did a nice job of stuffing that trap. It was a good, good effort by the fullback. Gain of four down to the 20-yard line. It's second and six. Walsh again in motion. And again, they give it to Rodgers. And Rodgers, you're about three. Nothing fancy. Right up the middle. Again, David Spiker in there for the stop. And it's amazing how well these kids are playing under these conditions. Really impressive performance by both, both high schools. And before we go any further, we've got to give a lot of credit to our camera people. Our Sports Channel crew, and they can't move around. They're out there. Guys, they're suffering. Third and three. Second man through. And look out, it's Jeremy Walsh, and Walsh, as O'Shea takes the dive, Jeremy Walsh is in for the touchdown. Great setup there. They ran the fullback three consecutive times. Aster Rogers up the middle, and again, they faked to Rogers, drew the linebackers in, and gave it to Walsh. Watch right here. They faked to the fullback. There's the linebackers, and Walsh, as the second man through, pops it out. Nice job of downfield blocking right there. Great effort by Jeremy Walsh. Looks like ranked the tight end with a good block, too, on the linebacker, as both teams now have scored twice. And let's see whether Walsh will kick or North will try for two. Sometimes something is overshadowed quite a bit is the downfield blocking, because you have to sustain that longer on those long runs. Well, North will try to tie it here with the two-point attempt. That's not your set. That's the weather. Walsh in motion. Shoots it quickly and incomplete. Intended for Walsh. Rocky O'Shea to break it up. So 3.38 to go. The two-point conversion fails. And looks like there's a central player down. 
try to see who that is. Looks like a right leg problem. Take a look at the touchdown. Right there, faking to the fullback. There goes the second man through, Jeremy Walsh. A favorite play with Naperville, Naperville North, one of their bread and butter plays, and they've run it successfully over the years. They get that fullback going up inside, drawing those linebackers, and they give it to the second man through. Jeremy Walsh, a very versatile back, his second year as a starter. That's just a cramp. Jeremy Walsh. Yeah, that's cut the offensive lineman, and uh, he looks to be okay. So, 3.38 to go first half, and it's 14 to 12. Naperville North has come back with a touchdown, but trails by two. Our next Chicago Bulls game on Sports Channel will be coming up Thursday live coverage, with or without the worm, probably without. Begins at 6.30, the Bulls game time, followed by the Bulls and Orlando Magic without Shaq at 7.00. Michael will be there. Scotty will be there. Here's Jeremy Walsh to kick it off. And second at the 15. Mark Pollock. And it looks like uh, Mark Pollock. Oh, was he get a sneak for the mud? Good coverage making a tackle. Aster Rogers, the fullback. Takes it across the 20 to the 25-yard line. 3.32 left in the half. And Naperville Central will be in business again after the North 8-play 66-yard drive. Jeremy Walsh with the 17 yards and the touchdown run. Eight up, about four and a half minutes on the clock. Once again, it's Tumulty. And Tumulty gets a couple. And Brian Hahn. Brian Hahn coming in to make the stop. Hahn has been playing a lot tonight. Again, they were worried about his health. From the 25. Good job right there. He's just reading Tumulty. That's his key. And he just follows him wherever he goes. Tries to stay under control. Let Tumulty make his move. And then he'll break out. No game. Second and ten. This is Stevens and Corey Stevens. Good yardage brought down by Chapetta. Good call. Well, you get him dropping back. I'll tell you, when you have a quarterback like Tim Laver, no matter what the conditions are, you can, you can see the linebacker starting to draw to get back. And all of a sudden, here comes Corey Rogers. Didn't carry the ball a lot this year. 77 times for 333 yards. Didn't have any running touchdowns, but he averaged four yards a carry. So he's effective when he does handle the ball. Ball out to the 40. It's a first and 10. And this is Tumulty. And Jim Tumulty gets some good yardage. McShay and Vandershot. Vandershot bring him down. Running the counter trap. Watch the guard pull here and the tackle right behind him. And here comes Tumulty following that. Nice job by the outside linebacker. He's the one that really made that play because there was a big hole if he could have gotten to it. Pick up of three at second and seven. With a minute 35 left to go first half. It has been a well-played ball game. So surprisingly, today. surprisingly so. Lavery now. And that was a quarterback draw. And big hits in there. And Lavery is down, and he uh, might be getting up a little slowly. Look like Chris Williams again and Brian Hahn combining and you could see the way he right there when Hahn they, uh, no that's Williams and there's Hahn wham wham so third down and about five look for Jason Shear. But there is Tumulty, and Tumulty, this time he has stopped short. Ryan Fee coming up to make the big stop. 
with 30 seconds to go and county. And very quickly and very smartly, Naperville North takes a timeout. They are going to see if uh, they could force this punt here, maybe get something going in the final 30 or actually 29 seconds. Let's take a look right here. Just another little counter trap running in behind the garden to tackle. And uh, nice job of tripping him up. If he'd been able to bounce it outside, he had a lot of running room. Well, the punter is Troy Munson. Tonight. If in fact Central chooses to do that, you take a look at what had been red uniforms are now a deep dark. So fourth down, Munson will kick it. Now the key to this is not so much the kicker, but the center. For oh, I would think that he'd get up and a little Dr closer. Drop back the tight end is the center. And we'll try to figure out. Good snap. He's back there. Good kick. This will roll dead inside the 25 yard line. So with 19 line. seconds to go, North will have one more shot at it for the half trailing. 14 to 12. Again. First that was a good snap, a good low kick. I'm sure Joe was a little nervous there. You get in a situation like this with this kind of a element that a uh, kick like that can be blocked very easily. There's Joe Bungie. Coach Tilton High in the public league. Yes, he did. Brought him well deep into the state playoffs one year. The also coached the Gordon Tech. Central 14. And they do not get a playoff, so both teams will head as quickly as they can to the locker room with the score here at Central's Memorial Field, Naperville Central 14, Naperville North 12. We'll be back with halftime activities in just a minute. Red Hawks of Naperville Central lead the Naperville North Huskies 14 to 12. The two teams have met three times, and we've been telling you, three times previously in the postseason. And North has won all three, including last year, by a count of 21 to 11. Let's check in with Jim Blaney, who takes a look back at last year's semifinal. In the game last year, Naperville Central had a chance to put the thing away early. Three times they had the ball deep in Naperville North territory. But yet out of those three drives, Naperville Central could only come up with one field goal. So Naperville North got the ball for the second time in the game, trailing 3-0 when they really got going. The play that did it for them, a 51-yard gain by Lavelle Brown that set up the first touchdown of the game. Let's see if Naperville North can convert in the red zone on third and long. Open. Has a man open. Into the end zone for the touchdown, number 23, Jeremy Walsh. The first touchdown of the game, the crossing pattern by myself, thrown by Kavanaugh. That was just an exciting time in the game, and that really got our fans into it, got our team into it. The two linebackers ran into each other when they crossed, and that, that's ideal. That's exactly what we want to happen in that situation. And Jeremy just broke open. At the half, the Huskies led 7-3, to three, and Naperville North got the ball to open the second half, but turned it over to the Red Hawks, who drove deep into North Territory, only to be forced into another field goal attempt. Yes, the last couple times, he was way off to the left and flattered the last time, and there's the fake. Tumulty will carry. Deegan chases. Tumulty still alive, throws it into the back of the end zone. Incomplete. We thought our chances were better uh, trying to fake, and... Uh, we thought they, were, they had their black on. It turned out they didn't, and Jim did have a little problem, so we thought that the fake was the way to go. We wanted to pull something out of the bag, pull some tricks out of the bag, and we tried to do it, but it didn't work. Um, I was hoping it would. It wasn't as close as it came. The Huskies took over and went all the way downfield. Kavanaugh back to throw. Looking into the end zone, has his man open the touchdown for Matt Deegan. Naperville North leads 13-3 kind of went right at him with a pass and you know Deegan just you know came across the middle you know I hit him on his break and it was I mean it was just you know a, a great play it was real it was real exciting touchdown for Matt Deegan but the Red Hawks answered right back second down nine Lavery with time into the end zone for Tumulty he makes the catch but I do not believe it was the end zone yes it was touchdown Naperville Central my opinion 
it was a touchdown for a split second. I know there had to be a centimeter of that ball across the goal line, and uh, the official made a good call, I think, and it was a touchdown. At where I was standing, when he fell, the ball came short of the goal line, and so I came up running, signaling no, and then like the ref came in, said it was a touchdown, and tried to argue with him, but he wouldn't give it to us. But from my point of view, he wasn't in, but... If he had a better view, then he had a better view. The touchdown was on the board with the play of the game to come next. Central will go for two. Lavery pitches to Tumulty. Ten yards deep. Little pitch into the front of the end zone. Two-point conversion for Naperville Central. Pulled down by Jason Scher. It's 14-11. The snap, I was going, and I saw an opening, and I was going to run it in, but that opening filled up real quick, a heck of a lot quicker than what I thought it would be, and uh, those guys came in strong, so I just, like, basket tossed it. When they came up, they came off Jay, so I just basket tossed it right up to him, and he caught it. He usually can set up and throw when he wants to throw it to me, but this time he just got it. I don't know how he got it out there. It looks like he was getting hit right before he threw it, and then he just somehow got out there. It was a great play. Things were looking good for Naperville Central. Even though they were down three, they had momentum and seven and a half minutes were left in the game. But Naperville North's offensive line took over, allowing the Huskies to march down the field and ice the win. Now remember, in case you just joined us, that was last year. That's why the uniforms were so clean. Tonight, it's a totally different story. Right now, it's 14 to 12. Central is leading, and I am joined by the dean of Chicago prep writers. He is Taylor Bell of Chicago Sun-Times. Nice and dry. What part of the press box have you been in? <laughs> the other side. Oh, my. Well, let me tell you. The let windows me... aren't open. That's true. Well, let me ask you, as the breeze is coming right through, right at us, what, what's your reaction to a game this, this well played? Well, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. I thought I got here about 4 o'clock, and it was, the water was already standing on the field, and I anticipate, like a lot of people, like the first uh, touchdown, we'd have a lot of turnover and the game would be decided on turnovers. They're playing now, uh, after that initial turnover, they're playing like this, like we're in a dry field. I mean, they're just running up and down the field, and, and their offenses are functioning uh, as they normally do. You know, Taylor, I guess the cliche is once you start playing, you don't care what the conditions are, but I imagine that'd be stretching it some with this. Yeah, the kids are the kids look like they're having fun, if that's, if that's possible, but the point is that they are playing well, and it's a well-played game, and, and I'm, I think everybody's happy about that under these kind of conditions. Well, you talk talked about this as we were uh, talking before the game. This could well be the best game of all. Uh, it, it comes up in the quarterfinals, but it could well be that the two best teams in the state are playing tonight. No, I, I think that uh, we could easily say that the winner of this game will win the Class 6A championship. I would be surprised if anybody other than one of these two teams, uh, the winner of this game, wins it because they are that good. They've been there before. They've got that kind of talent, and they've been there all year. These are, these are the best. The DuPage Valley is the strongest conference in the state. They've proven that and uh, these are the two premier teams. All right, we're going to see you down at Hancock Stadium in Bloomington Normal. Looking forward to it. And I'm sure the weather couldn't be any better than it is tonight. Taylor Bell, thanks a lot. Go back to that warm seat in the press box, and we'll be back with statistics and second-half action. Back at halftime, getting ready for the start of the third quarter. The rain has not let up. The temperatures are going down. But again, uh, that has not kept this game from being a very, very good one. Central leading 14 to 12 over North, with North scoring first here, Jack. Well, this is a good throw. It lays it up in the air, but it's even a better catch. Great concentration right in the corner of the end zone. Justin McCarron's making that catch. His seventh touchdown grab of the year, none finer. Now, Central getting on the board. Preceded by this fine reverse. Well, this is what set it up. The reverse to Shear. Everybody's going after Tumulty. He hands off to Shear. Nice cutback. Nice downfield block. And a good effort there by Jason Shear to get the ball down in scoring position. Led to a touchdown. A quarterback sneak by the quarterback, Lavery. And then Central scoring again with the big guy, Tumulty. Well, he's reading his blocks up front on the zone scheme and punches it in the end zone. A little high stepping and maybe just to shake the mud off the cleats. Meanwhile... Coming right back, North behind their big guy. Jeremy Walsh, second man through, fake to the fullback, give it a second man. 
and off he is to the races. Well, the difference right now is a two-point conversion, and it's a two-point game. Statistics, what can you say? A few more rushing yardage for Central. The passing yardage, well, not a lot for uh, Lavery and Central. And, of course, they are primarily a passing team. The time of possession, I think, is quite interesting. Fairly close there for this kind of a conditions, which means that they've shown the balance that they both possess, even under these adverse conditions. A couple of turnovers for North, the one big one for Central, leading to the first touchdown. Turn the money in for the drawing. Well, the story here, 14 to 12. As the conditions get worse, we will bring you the third quarter right after this. We are jammed. Join Amy Stone and Brandon Thompson and other high school reporters for this month's show. We'll jam with Phil Jackson, Simeon Rice, Kendall Gill, and we'll hook you up with online trivia, bring you the plays of the month, and much, much more. Friday night, 6.30, schoolyard jam right here and right before the Bulls game on the channel. I'm Mike Lederman along with Jack McInerney. Dave Turner, our Sports Channel crew in the truck. And there you see the Naperville North Huskies. They trail by two, 14 to 12, against their crosstown rivals, home team, and undefeated Red Hawks of Naperville Central. There's the crowd, and the, and the crowd is substantial. Uh, there, gosh, the uh, Naperville, you're looking over at the Naperville uh, North stands. No, nope, you're looking at the Central stands. That's Central, you know. Yep. The, the Red Hawks. The halftime show was great to have him bring in Tommy Bartlett in to do the water <laughs> show at halftime. Oh, show. Jack. Great idea. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. There you take a look at Jim Tumulty. Turnover on his first carry, but he's more than made up for it. That incited him. Yeah, or inspired him. He's got the, uh, the uh, two-point conversion. I've been especially impressed with the, how well they're playing this game under these conditions. This is really something. Yeah, not to belabor the point, but it's absolutely true. It is, it is inhuman out here. Jeremy Walsh to tee it up for Naperville North. In the visiting, what started out to be white. Good kick. And O'Shea, number seven, takes it. And Rocky O'Shea. Still going. Check it, it was Shearer, number two, who took the kickoff. And Shearer gets good yardage. Jason Shearer. He's the big receiver for this team, but obviously only one completion for three yards. So the passing game for Central has been negated. So, tough night for him to showcase his skills. He did it all year long with 42 catches and 802 yards. There is Tim Lavery. He's got Stevens and Shearer. Audible. Checking off here. And looking at it, it's deflected up in the air as somebody got a big paw on it. Number two receiver. It looks like Ken Marker, number 81, might have had the hand. We'll see you take a look at it. Obviously, not much to, uh, to choose from here because the passing has been so tough. But Kavanaugh's three for five, 44 yards. Lavery just that one completion for three. Two picks, though, against Kavanaugh. Very difficult situation for them to be thrown in these circumstances. It's too bad the crowd, the viewers at home, don't get a chance to see two of the outstanding quarterbacks. Yeah, Lavery nearly 1,900 yards passing and 23 touchdowns. Second and 10 from the 35. This time he cranks it up and side on it. It is complete. Kevin Kane, I believe. A check it. It's over to Todd Grotbeck, the tight end. Grotbeck, 6'4", 195. Brought down by Rich Childs. And good pattern. Lots of room in there for Grotbeck. Grotbeck just went right down the middle of the field. 6'4", 195-pound junior. Had 13 catches during the year. Average 17 yards a catch. To the 40-yard line of Naperville North. About a 25-yard play. You'll excuse us if we don't have the exact measurements for you tonight. First and 10 with the single back. Again, this time here he's got the corner. And Shearer in a foot race. Well, touchdown, Petra. Just 
talking about how Shearer has been uh, really a non-factor, but Jason Shearer turns around a 39-yard touchdown pass and catch from Lavery, his 13th of the season. Well, adding. it wasn't a long throw. It's a, what we call a quick, the quick route. It's a three-step drop by the quarterback and really a three-step movement by Shearer makes the catch and he just outmaneuvers the corner. Well, once Rich Childs fell down, Oh, Nobody else could get him for North, and there is Jason Shear, 43 catches on the year, averages about 20 yards reception. That one for 39 plus. There's the Again, toss. Again, the try for two. Tumulty and Tumulty is stopped short. Oh, there he goes. He flipped the ball back to Lavery, and Lavery gets the two-point conversion. He was stopped dead. And up to Tumulty with the whistle. But he had the presence to flip it back. That's why they're 11-0. Plays like that. Want to take a look at the replay? He is stopped. Here is Tumulty. He is done. He's finished. He well. Look at that. Just as he's going down. And here is the pitch to Lavery. Now only that could happen under these kind of conditions. That was like a scrub. What a heads-up play that oh, was. Absolutely. He was down. He was. You know, all but down. Special athletes, Mike. You know, all three of these kids that we talk about, Tumulty, Lavery, and Shear, are outstanding baseball players on an outstanding baseball team that Naperville Central has. They've been playing together as sophomores and starting on both varsity squads, football and baseball. Well, the two of them celebrate. 65-yard drive and only three plays. The 40-yard touchdown reception to Shear. And the two-point uh, the two point conversion. By Lavery on the pitch from Tumulty. Uh, you will, the people in the paper tomorrow will be reading about it. Won't know how excited that play really was. Paul kick is taken by Childs. There's a flag on the play. But the flag, flags back by the kickoff offside. The kickoff team, Mike. Right? Offside against the Red Hawks. They will go back to the 35. Is Wayne Kendall. Wayne's done a great job all year officiating. Yep. Had Wayne in a few games over the years. I don't know how you right, right yeah. there. There he is. Good call. Five yard penalty. Pollock will kick off from the 35. So back the ball comes to the 35. 10.41 to go here in the third quarter. 22 to 12. Central. Now there goes the ball boy out there. I hope he doesn't step in a puddle or he's going to be under. Can't, there he is. Look oh at him. Boy. Let's give him some credit too. Oh, that must be Lavery's little brother. <laughs> Either that or Timmy just landed his jacket. Or it's just... I tell you, they got lifeguards out along here. So a lot of people thought that they were going to have more police, but they ended up hiring some lifeguards along the sideline. Kaiser and McCarran, the deep backs. Once again, to oh, McCarran, and McCarran comes back and makes the play. And nearly a disaster for North as McCarran did recover. And a little extra curriculum right there as Corey Stevens got into it after he made the tackle. Probably tried so, to plug up his snorkel there and got him set up. Scott Cavanaugh now completed three of his first five passes. Uh, not necessarily the time, Jack, to let it all hang out and start throwing. There's still better than 10 minutes to go here in the third quarter. The conditions are going to get worse. Where they get better. Again in motion is Walsh, and again they give it to the short man. Nothing doing and over there. A gain of two. Walsh maybe a yard or two. One of the difficult things about this, Mikey, they run that counter action, but it's tough for those linemen to move the guys out. They just cannot get any traction to drive block or to trap or so it's a very difficult situation for the linemen. In many cases right now it's easier for Naperville Central because they're a straight ahead team running the zone. 
Well, a generous two yards, so second and eight for Naperville Central. Kevin out of throw, he's got Walsh. And Walsh close to first down yardage. The kind of passing they'll be doing is get the back coming out of the backfield, the shorter routes, five, six yards out in the flat. Buckley, the linebacker, making the stop, knocking him out of bounds. See right here, Walsh comes right out of the slot. He comes right out of the flat about five yards. And it's a first down up to the 34. 9-28, third quarter. See the difference in the middle of the field compared to the sideline. Oh, and the ball is on the ground. Central says they have it. It looked like Tom uh, Georgievic, one of his rare carries tonight, and gave it up. There's Joe Bundy on the sideline. Watch number 33. There's Georgievic sending man through again, right there. Just tough to hang on to it. And if Central will be going for the jugular on this one, and if they're able to score in this, in this kind of condition, it's very, very difficult for North to come back. There's Rocky O'Shea who recovered the fumble. Three turnovers now for North, just the one for Central. Tumulty. And a good defensive play, no gain. Landgraf again, we've been calling his number a lot, number 51, Tory Landgraf. Tory Landgraf does an outstanding job out there, 5'11", 175 pound junior. A nice job of stringing that out. You do not want to end uh, up face mask down in that mud. It'd be disastrous. He might not be able to breathe for a while. And the wind is blowing right across the field, literally from the top to the bottom of your screen, and that is not helping things. There is Lavery. Out of the pocket and incomplete. Shearer, sure, the intended receiver. Now, under normal conditions, Shearer made a great move. He's got outstanding moves. And he was wide open for quite a while, but uh, Lavery had a difficult time delivering the ball. You see, he's slipping with every step. and He's wide open. He just had a tough time getting it there. picked up as you can see it's almost uh, as though it's coming straight out of the north now third and 11. Lavery again side on he's got Tumulty first down central Tumulty over the middle I'll tell you what it's real credit a real credit to those quarterbacks. They will deliver the ball in this position right there. Kind of sidearms it, but gets it to Tumulty on a crossing route. Nice catch, nice throw. Chapetta and Fee combining on the stop. But a gain of 14, so first down, 10 at the 25. Tumulty is uh, Labor's second favorite target. Shero scored the touchdown just moments ago as the first. This is Tumulty again. Tumulty makes that swing. Childs drags him down. Rich Childs, last man between Tumulty and a touchdown. And a good scamper on the left side for Jim Tumulty. You see right here, it's a zone scheme, and he just pops it right outside on that first move, even before he got to the line of scrimmage. Again, right there, he's got to have web feet. I don't know how he can get that kind of traction. Right there, he just kind of ran out. All of a sudden, he got in good traction. He how to handle it. First and goal, the ball's on the nine-yard line of Naperville North as Central is starting to put on the pressure here. 7.35 to go. Staying on the ground with Tumulty. Touchdown, Central again. This whole drive, Mike, credit really needs to be given to that offensive line of Naperville Central. They are really getting Naperville North off the line of scrimmage. They outweigh him, but you can see the push. I mean, there's just push shoving them up the field right there. They're five yards down the field and collapsing that defense. Tumblety's just able to turn down and get across the goal line. Extends the ball across the goal line. Charles, the last man with a chance to get him and did You can see that big knee brace on his left knee there. That's the reason he was out for those two ball games. He's going to have to have reconstructive surgery after the season. 
Gronenboom to try the extra point with O'Shea to hold. Great camera yeah. shot. The oh. kick is no good. You can see how hard it is and to kick. Minutes, Hitting the crossbar too low anyway, but right now, Naperville Central in command. 28 to 12. 7.32 to go third quarter. We'll take a break. Let's take one more look at the touchdown. That's put a 16-point bulge in there for Central. Tumulty just bounces it outside and gets enough traction and enough extension to get it over the line. Kaiser and McCarrens to take the kick. And the kick is short. And returns the kick for the Huskies. Jerkovic, the up man, taking Jerkovic. the kick. And uh, North with decent Great field Stevens position. So now, and Charles down by two touchdowns the plus. Begins. First and ten. North's got to move after 32. the Red Hawks. Five plays, 45 yards after the fumble. Only a minute and 50 on the clock. And Tumulty with the second touchdown. Well, normal conditions, a dry field. I'm sure that there wouldn't be that much worry about getting back in the ball game. Under these circumstances, it's going to be a little more difficult. Again, Walsh in motion. Tap it off. Got him open. Had him open. He just couldn't deliver the ball. Intended for Jerjevic. Incomplete. Looking for number 33, Jerjevic. Tommy Jerjevic. Cutting back against the green on that pass, he just could not deliver it. A nice pickup that he's been able to get to it. Please report to the press line. Uh, you see the numbers on Tumulty as he's talking to Tim Lavery, and those are impressive numbers. And that was with a good leg. Yeah. From the 34, second down. Audible. Come on. Both these are veteran quarterbacks who can check off at the line. Kavanaugh straight back, looking over the middle and incomplete again. Looking for the tight end, Mike Rank. Rank 17 catches on the year, a couple of touchdowns. The conditions you can see, the conditions in the middle of the field. The and up here, has turned to mud. I feel like a, like a lookout on a freighter in the North Atlantic. Yeah, you can Please. barely see across. Cameras are a lot more sensitive than human eyes right now. Third and ten. Kavanaugh under pressure, flips the screen out. It's complete, it looks like to Walsh, we think. Kavanaugh's pass, complete to Jeremy Walsh. Run out of bounds by Spiker. And you can see the pressure here. They had a stun on. He sets it up nicely. A little difficult right here. You can see Hawkins coming up from the outside. Good pursuit. Big play just turns into a small gainer. So a fourth and four. First punt now for uh, Naperville. Tommy Georgievic is the punter. Four north. Back in Average is about 32 yards of punt. Oh, bad snap. The snap is bad, but Georgievic gets it off. Oh, O'Shea can't handle it. Cleary is there, and Cleary, Jimmy Cleary comes with the heads up play. This looks like mud wrestling, mud wrestling. right here. I thought he was going to get that. Oh, uh, rank. Temper starts to flare a little bit. But boy, when uh, O'Shea mishandled the slippery ball, look at that. And watch Cleary, how alert he is. Lamb oh. That would have been a big play for Naperville North. Just the big splash, takes a divot. And there's Cleary. Good heads up play by Cleary. So, Central dodges a bullet and will go to work from its 30, about the 28 yard line. Again, the field markers are just, just Gone here. Look at Tumulty break away. And Tumulty. Number four, the workhorse is working hard. Well, you know, somebody might say, well, let's run the clock. All you got to do is run the clock by giving him the football. Look at the cutbacks right here. Now, that's on a bad leg that's going to have surgery at the end of the season. He's something special. Landgraf tripped him up. But a gain of seven. Close to an eight-yard gain right there. At the 36. 
Here's a good look at Jim Tumulty, only 5'10", 185. He's got it again. And he gets close to or past the first down marker, Rich Childs, who's been busy in that right corner coming up to make the uh, make the stop. Meanwhile, Joe Bungie is having a few things to say to his defense. First down, first and 10 at the 41. Take a there look he at is this again. Bouncing it out. You can see again he's getting good traction. Tremendous balance. Tremendous balance. Shedding two, three, and four tacklers before Childs knocked him down. First and ten. Ball at the 42. 450 and counting here in the third quarter. Counter trap. Hamilton going the other way and turning a four-yard loss into uh, back to the line of scrimmage. Ryan Fee, number 34, making the stop after the pursuit. He's just packed with energy. I mean, he just uh, he pops up. You, you think after one carry that he doesn't have anything left. Comes up with great effort, one after another. Tremendous energy level. Central in command now, 28 to 12. He's had a lot more carries than 20. 136 yards so far. Lavery. Picked off by North. The interception by Fee and Ryan Fee with a big, big pick for his side. And Naperville was lucky that he went to that side because in the bottom of the screen, Shear was open down along the left-hand side, but he went back over there and threw the interception. But notice he got pressure and threw it on his heels, let the ball hang. Good effort by Fee. Takes the ball to midfield. You can see there was pressure there. Was pressure, throw it on throw, his heels. Yeah, threw it off his back foot. It was intended for Kevin Gerwig, and the interception, the turnover, gives North the ball on the 50. And nothing doing for Astor Rogers. It's a big series for North. Get their confidence up if they can drive the ball and punch one in here. They're right back in the ball game. Larry McEwen never panics. Just a great composure. Great job of calling plays, keeping the defense on their heels. No gain, so it's second and ten. May have been a busted play, but the short man ended up with it. Yeah, there was a mix up there, Mike. The fullback. Yeah, yeah Roger Reed. Third and nine. That's a 48. Of course, it's tough on the option to make the read here and, and try and ride that fullback in and decide what that defensive tackle is going to do when they can't even see sometimes that he's the, the tackle in. McCarron's out to the right. On the third and nine, and the bad snap. Bad exchange. But that's the first one today. You would think that that would have been a common occurrence throughout the entire ball game, but that's the first uh, exchange problem right there, and I think that really belonged to Scott Cavanaugh because he kind of pulled out of there early. It looked like Nate Duncombe got the ball up there. He's the center, number 66. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Jurjevic to kick. And Cleary and O'Shea back for Central. Line driver. This goes right to Rocky O'Shea. Not taking any chances with that one. Puts the knee down. A minute 34 left to go here in the third quarter. And Naperville Central will go back to work with that 28 to 12 lead. Well, they've been controlling the line of scrimmage, and I'm sure they're going to continue to do that. They're running behind a big offensive line. 
Well, as big as they are, North is bigger. North averages about 230 a man, and Central averages not quite 220. But I think the difference is as far as where those people are at. <laughs> right now, that's on the offensive line for Central, and the defensive line is a little smaller for North. And changed up a little bit, gave it to Gave it to Rogers, I think. Gave it to one. Stevens, I believe, right there. And it is very, very difficult. Yeah, there's Stevens, yeah. number 33. He might have been getting bored, Mike. He hasn't carried the ball since I don't think the first quarter. Mike, the position, position at 25 seconds. From the 25. Gain of four yards. Out to the 25-yard line. You see how deep Tumblefee lines up about seven yards from where the ball is snapped. Penalty flags fly as Tumulty gets thrown for the loss. And uh, holding call. Preliminary there, signal there is holding. Against Central. Doug Groover, number 65, on the tackle. And look, oh man. Uh, Take a look at that. Oh. Oh my. But you know what? That, he'll be talking about that 25, 30 years from now. That'll be the neatest thing. Be well, the happiest somewhere. person in the world probably has to be his mom. Oh, maybe in the 90s, his dad, who does not have to wash that suit. That's right. We Can you have penalty against the Red Hawks? Well, the ball comes back 10 yards. I want to thank our spotter right now, Zon Yeoman, work tonight. Brian Sconacy up in the booth. Dodging the raindrops, the wind, and the icicles. Thirteen seconds left to go. You see the scoreboard, and time will run out before the next play goes. So we'll tell you right now that that's the end of the third quarter. Quite a good one for Naperville Central. Two touchdowns. Gives them a 28-12 lead over North. We'll be back for the final 12 minutes in just a minute. Oh, uh, we are back here at Naperville Central High School. Mike Lederman with Jack McInerney. And you can see uh, between the raindrops, if you are lucky, 28 to 12, Naperville Central, with a big third period, two touchdowns. Central now with a second down, and about 14, and they give it to Tumulty again. And down goes Tumulty in the slop. Tory Landgraf again, and Landgraf has had a big, big day. Well, he's been doing a good job. They've been running his direction, which has given him quite a few opportunities, and he's been doing a pretty nice job up there. We have, uh, I guess the uh, the cameras have taken a hit because of the weather, so we will do the best we can. One of our cameras is out. Third down now. And about 17. Draw. Lavery on the draw, and it goes. Look out, it's Corey Stevens with good yardage. Close to the first down, and he may have it. Stevens with a 16, 17-yard run. Chris McShay, nothing complicated about that. A simple draw, but Corey Stevens with a big run for him. Well, they have, they have such outstanding people out in the perimeter that it stretches the defense. And you can see right, right there, a nice block by Troy Monson, 6'3", 245 pounds, helping uh, Stevens break loose. Williams finally making the stop, but it's a first down for Neighborville Central. 10.50 to go, and the drive continues. Penalty and penalty thrown to a big, big loss by Williams. Chris Williams breaking into the backfield, an outstanding play by the senior. We'll see Chris Williams, number 35, come into the play right here. 5'10", 195 pound senior, had 32 tackles with 10 assists, had a total of 50 some tackles over the year. Does a nice job right there. The penalty hung on to the ball, not easy to do there. He should be spun around. That's a great shot right there. Oh. 
Loss of seven. Double take. And he gets back to about the original line of scrimmage. Coming up by Chapetta. Take a shot there. Take a look at that brace on his left knee. A gain of seven. Right. Third and ten. Is. Now look at the muck they're all walking in. Here's the toss coming right at you. Great camera angle right here. You can see Stevens kicking out. Tumulty trying to get up in that seam right there. Make it to 34. Boy, that is their bread and butter rushing play. With Stevens with the kick out block. Tumulty follows him, circles usually the right side. Clock at 9.23 and running. Third down 10. Lavery wings it out. Yes. He's got his man. Yes. And that's Gladbeck. Gladbeck yes. over the middle. Chapetta the stop. What a beautifully executed play. It's almost as though Lavery is cradling the ball as he's swinging it. Well, he's got big hands, obviously, to start out with. But what happens here is the linebackers, he does a nice job of pump faking. They're playing sheer. They're double teaming sheer for the most part. And there's Todd Grotschbach, the big target at 6'4", 195 pounds. He's only a junior. And he picks up about 20 yards down to the 36 of North. So Central on the move again. That's his second big catch of this ball game. Right back to the left, Shearer to the right. Two backs in the backfield, and Tumulty again with a big hole over the left tackle. Following Klippowitz and Nolda, then Klippowitz. I thought he was on NYPD Blue. Right, a game of three. The field is really right now. Now it looks like I won. <laughs> But again, they'll, they'll be probably trying to run into the sideline where the better footing is. Gain of eight, second and two. A lot right back. In. He will come and sit on the left side. Uh, probably a delay right here. That's what it is. They did not get the play off. Now that's the first time they did that today. Now that could have been a misalignment. We'll make it second and 11. Of, uh, but from the, the other hand, they might have been trying to flip him over to see what the defense would do if they would adjust. Well, in other games, they've done a lot of that. They haven't done it that much tonight, but they do flip the tight end quite a bit. Then they bring him out, and they bring in Kevin K, 24, and the Grunenboom, and they line them up on the left side, as they're doing right now, and Tumult, he goes left in the slot. Second down and Lavery will go down big time at the hands of Chris McShay. By Chris Williams. Check it. It was Chris Williams, number 35, coming over to make that sack. They've got a stun on here. Nice job downfield by the secondary. Flushes Lavery and Chris Williams comes into play right here. Third and 29. Now loss of from the Red Hawks, 12 35. on that. And Central for the first time is going backwards. Seven and a half minutes to go. 28 to 12, Central leading. Third down play here from their uh, opponent 45 to draw. Now Stevens is getting a couple of yards. Well, well short of the first. And McShay. And we will see a punt here. I believe only the second time. As Munson will go back. Number 63 to kick it away. At the 50. Troy Munson. Back in punt formation. And the center being a big factor here. Tom Kukulski deep. For the Husky. Number 88 Kukulski. Tom Kukulski. Standing at about his own five-yard line. A ten-yard line. Now he comes up. Kick is going to be with the win. Good snap. And a good kick. And that carries into the end zone. He didn't know it just might have splashed and sat there on the two. So it'll be a touchback. North has to get going here. 629 to go. They trail by 16. Fourth quarter. Scott Cavanaugh on second down, sacked in the backfield for a loss. 
Back to his 19. Third and 17 from the 13. So it brings up the third and 17 on first down. The Karens ran the reverse, and uh, he was taken down for a yard loss as well. So clock ticking at 5.20. North third and 16. And here's Kavanaugh. Again with the sack. So three plays, three losses. Clock under five minutes. Well, considering the fact that he can hardly grip the ball and he would have been throwing into a fairly stiff wind. Okay. See, the coverage here is pretty good. You see his running room. You can see they've got him covered right there. Kind of looked like he had the linebacker right in his face. Nick Paleo and uh, boy you take a look at that screen and it's just pelting rain but now with a fourth and 18 North will go Kavanaugh down he goes and down goes the hopes I think of Naperville North in the 1995 season Josh Hawkins we haven't called his name much Leading tackler on this team makes the sack, so four plays, four losses. And the ball is on the five-yard line of North. See, Kavanaugh breaks loose in the tackle, but Hawkins comes racing up. He's their leading tackler with 115 of them, 6'1", a 205-pounder. Josh Hawkins. And the Naperville Central crowd, the home crowd, as wet as they are, Getting excited now. Oh boy. You have to be dedicated or have some problems. Huh? <laughs> nah, this is this is dedication. This is Lavery from the five Tumulty. Close to the goal line. And touchdown. Number three for Jim Tumulty. He certainly came back after that first time he handled the ball down inside the five and fumbled, and which led to Naperville North. Great field position in the first quarter. Inspired player this whole ball game. Brown going to kick it. O'Shea to hold it. Looking for point number 35. Let's open up our windows at home. It'll come right in the window. Yeah. Yeah, just made it. Now, you know, one of the things we have not mentioned throughout this broadcast is that Tumblety was their kicker all last year. Doesn't have to do it. Doesn't have to do it tonight. Up and over. Five yards away. Three touchdowns tonight for Jim Tumblety. And that would, uh, as they say, just about do it without the just about. Well, they may be wet, but they're sure happy. Naperville Central. In the roll of 12 and 0. There's the story. Three touchdowns here in the second half to break open a close game. 14 to 12 at halftime. You know what we'll be hearing, or at least a lot of people in Naperville over the years. Well, if it would have been a dry day, we'll be hearing those stories for many years to come. Kaiser and McCarran's back again for North. Pollock to kick it. McCarran. Justin McCarran. Good field position around the 40 yard line with 345 to go. Our next Chicago Blackhawks game. They're on Sports Channel. They take on the Washington Capitals tomorrow night. Live coverage begins at 6 with Blackhawks game time followed by the Hawks and the Capitals at 630.
Cold steel on ice. Well, I'll tell you, this is cold sod. Oh, my. This has been a, quite an experience. You know, I couldn't even get my Labrador to come with me today. <laughs> I like your line. They don't need referees. They need lifeguards. Oh, my. 3.45 to go. Naperville North trying to get something going here. Kavanaugh with the play fake. Let's it go. Long look from the Carrots. Not this time. Carrots out there along with Jeremy Walsh. It fell between them. How they're getting any kind of distance on the ball is beyond me right now. There's a good shot of Larry McEwen. A little disappointed, I would imagine, at this point. A little bootleg fake here. They got two people coming across the field and coming to your screen right there. There's number one, and there's number two. Just can't get a grip on the ball. The story? North scored first. Central came and tied him. And since then, the Red Hawks have been the story. Marching downstate. Having uh, lots of time. Protection, can't find any receivers. But eventually, he's going to run out, and Vallejo knocks him out of bounds. Check it as Spiker. And, uh, Kavanaugh had all day back there, but good coverage downfield, and there's not much you can do. Well, you think about it. We're up here in the press box having trouble picking out these people, and all of a sudden he's back there with a rush, and they all look like they have the same uniforms on. Everybody's got a mud-colored uniform. Yeah. Scott Kavanaugh, 6'4", 190 pounds, second year as a starter. Outstanding prospect. Several Division I schools are looking at him. We'll be seeing him an awful lot on TV over the next four to five years. Yeah. Of course, Tim Lavery as well. This is a, quite a matchup, and it is unfortunate we really couldn't see these teams at their best. Maybe we see their hearts at their biggest. Kavanaugh looking for McCarran's foot. Couldn't hold on as he was fighting the sideline as well as the weather. At the 32. Three twenty-one, and again we're at fourth down. We'll see north of, yeah, we'll go here. See how the uh, Naperville Central starts subbing if they get the ball back. Well, we'll be able to pick them out a lot more easily. <laughs> That's for sure. Winner of this game takes on the uh, Sandberg Romeo Gold. That'll be played tomorrow. And here's Kevin on again. Looking for McCarran's broken up. The ball goes over. 3.15 to go. And reminder, we'll have the Sports Channel report for you tonight at 10. Check up on the Bulls and the latest in Dennis Rodman's pulled muscles. Look at the IHSA scoreboard. A shuffle back? Or is that a shuffle back? Or should we shuffle back to the report? What do you got called? Good shot. Oh, my. Let's go, Joe! Well, that's why this is a visual media <laughs> meeting. You don't need any words. Got a couple of clean uniforms in the backfield for Naperville. It's Doug Salvatore. Check it for Naperville Central. That's uh, Joe Cherimbolo. Cherimbolo, a JV player, brought up as a sophomore, getting his uniform dirty. He's in there with Zach Natonic. Natonic at fullback, a six foot junior. Pick up of six. Not going to be any hurry right now. 240 and counting. And I really don't think that Joe Fungi's going to have another score here. Not and taking Hayden Fry lessons, is he? But a great rivalry. Yeah. And remember, they have to play him next year. And two class coaches and two great programs. Again, it's Cerambolo. And he's brought down by Van Bershot. Tackled by Van Bershot. And Landgraf, it's amazing to have two such outstanding high school football programs in the same next weekend, state, six, eight, Yeah, seven, and, eight, uh, you know, the new seating, the 
make sure that they won't meet earlier than this. And we'll be on sale Tuesday, Wednesday, Ryan Thursday. Ryan Maloney, a uh, receiver, comes in number 36. And here's the period. Some fresh jerseys for Naperville North. Boy, you can see who's been in and who is new. On third down. Now we're going to get an encroachment call here against D.J. Johnson. D.J. was a little excited getting into the ball game. The semifinal game, which will be held at Memorial Stadium at Naperville Central. Well, the public address announcer announcing the uh, making the announcement of the semifinal game. As we told you, the. Uh, if the opponent will either be a Romeoville or uh, Carl Sandburg, and they play tomorrow. And they play uh, tomorrow, Sandburg being 11 and 0, and Romeoville being 10 and 1. Whichever one Naperville Central gets is going to have a heck of a game. Both of those teams are excellent football squads. And of course, the finals will be broadcast right here on Sports Channel, Class 1A through Class 6A. Thanksgiving weekend, Friday and Saturday. We'll be there along with Jim Blaney and Bill Gorley. We'll be bringing it to you, the annual Sports Channel Football Fest. And we know it's just going to be balmy weather back then. Here's Natonic. Right in the tonic, the ball carrier. Coming up to the final minute, so a couple of more snaps, and that should do it as more substitutions come in. Two. It has been the night for Red Hawk football. And we have to... Uh, Credit Joe Bungie and his staff with an outstanding effort, a gutsy effort. That's Joe right there in those green rain pants. They'll snap it once, maybe twice more. And this one will be in the books. Here's the ball carrier. The monkey is off Central's back. Yeah. They broke that playoff skid that they had with Naperville North. There's a shot of Bob Munkin in the green hat. Twenty-two seconds left. We're going to run the clock out here, and uh, everybody will take a well-deserved shower. They did a great job in these circumstances. Forget the elements right now. If you're a Red Hawk, everything's coming up roses. That's the end of the ball game with the score. Naperville Central 35, Naperville North 12. Back to wrap it up after this. An absolutely miserable, treacherous night could not obscure an outstanding performance by Naperville Central. Jack McInerney, we were wondering what kind of game we were going to get. It was a gutsy game, a gutty game, a game that showed an awful lot of heart on the part of both teams. But Naperville Central, you talk about a team that deserves to be number one. Well, it's a little bit early to crown them that, but I don't think they'd get too many opponents right now. Well, Larry McEwen certainly wouldn't be one of them. The thing is that they really did the job up front. The offensive line and Tumulty was just outstanding. But I think the credit really goes to the offensive line for Naperville Central. Naperville Central, again, led by only two at half. They gave the ball up on a turnover the first series. North went in to score on a second series. Uh, but then the second half, they shut Naperville North down. Central's the story. 35 points. Boy, they're ready for anybody, it seems. They really are. They go to 12 and 0. They're a great football team. And what could they do on a dry field? It would be amazing. Yeah, you have to wonder about that. And a letdown? Well, you just uh, don't wonder about that too much. Joe Bungie has got this team absolutely honed. Uh, well, they'll have to see who comes up a winner between uh, what, Carl Sandberg and Romeoville. And they will play the semifinal next week. And we will uh, take leave of you and uh, sign off. And